Erling Braut Haaland. If you don't know the name by now, you will very soon. The 19-year-old is absolutely tearing it up with Red Bull Salzburg in the Austrian league. And Manchester United are being heavily linked with a move for him in the January transfer window because we've been struggling for goals up front this season. He has been banging in goals. And with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being the manager that helped his early career at Molde, the links are clear. But what is going on? To speak about Haaland, his career so far, Solskjaer and everything in between, I'm speaking to TV2's Premier League correspondent Ingrid Haustensen from Norway. Thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, pleasure to be on your show, Sam. (laughs) (laughs) We have been trying to organise this for a long time. Work's got in the way, but finally today we can have that conversation about Haaland. And one look at his goal scoring record so far, it really is quite ridiculous, isn't it? It is. He's got 26 goals in 18 games so far this season for Salzburg. He's got seven goals in his first four Champions League games. He scored a hat-trick on his Champions League debut and he's 19 years old and it's his first season at Salzburg having moved from Molde. What's um, what's the reaction been like at Salzburg to his start to his career and the reaction back in Norway as well? Well, first of all, it's sort of been this wonderful journey to to follow him and what he has achieved in such a short time. And I think that a lot of people are a bit not surprised, but we for sure did not expect that when he left Molde just uh, shorter than a year ago. Uh, but what he's been doing so far is is amazing. Um, and this has all been happening way quicker than anybody expected. However, I don't think that it's a surprise to Arling himself. Um he said to himself already from a very young age that he wants to be the best in the world and he has a great winning mentality. Uh, so I don't think that he's sort of surprised. This is just sort of the natural involvement in his uh, football career. So uh, I think that he's very pleased, but everyone is in Norway. Everybody in uh, Salzburg are for sure just enjoying this. This is a great moment and where he is now begging all of those goals. So that's just wonderful to see. Now, as I said, his goal scoring is ridiculous, but from what I can see from the outside looking in, he he seems to be a very mature 19-year-old. There's been so many young players who have come through and had a lot of talent, but haven't had the sort of attitude to match. And he's already said that Ibrahimovic is one of his idols. He's already said that he's trying to mimic Ronaldo's diet to help him. Is that the sort of impression that you get as well, that Haaland is a very focused player on his career as you said he wants to be the best in the world and he's already saying that when he's a teenager yeah he is he's extremely uh, dedicated from what I can see he works extremely hard in everything that he does he is probably the first to come on the training field every day and the last one to leave in the end he does a lot of um, extra sort of exercises on his on his own uh, whether it's in the gym or in the field with his finishes or or anything basically and he is extremely determined in what he wants to achieve and what he wants to do in his football career Uh, everything from I remember like I spoke to him and he said that he has this red glasses that he puts on at night just to make sure that he's not like affected from watching it at like his cell phone, which will light up and you will not get tired. So he uses those red glasses every night to make sure that sort of he can just like wind down and, you know, get tired so he can rest probably. And as you said, he's now obviously on this Ronaldo diet with a lot of fish and stuff, which is supposed to be very good. (laughs) Uh, And he is, um, he's very sort of, He's humble, but you can already tell that, yeah, as you said, like Slatan is his um, idol and the guy that he really like looks up to. You can tell from the way that he speaks to media. He's a bit, um, he's got an attitude, which is sort of uh, a cool thing. Maybe not very Norwegian, but because uh, in Norway you think that you don't want to like stand out too much, but he's sort of the opposite. He has always said that you know I want to have the X factor factor that makes sort of other people recognize me and knows who I am um, so he's really good in that and 
like the Champions League. He loves the Champions League. That the Champions League song is his alarm tone that he wakes up to every morning. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and there was one uh, one day before they're gonna play a Champions League song, and he was just out in his car with his window sort of rolled down, and the captain on Salzburg just happened to walk by, and there he was playing the Champions League song in his car. <laughs> So he, uh, he's quite a character, uh, a really good one, um, so to speak. <laughs> with, with, with Solskjaer, now this, this is probably the, the reason that United fans are getting excited about Haaland, because Haaland is a wonderful talent and everybody's going to be in for him. But Solskjaer was the manager who sort of helped him through his early sort of career at Molde. Now, how, how was their relationship, Haaland and Solskjaer, and how important was that? for Erling in his early career? They had a really, really good uh, relationship in uh, in Molde. Uh, and Erling has said himself that um, he's always, Solskjaer has always uh, almost been like sort of this father figure for, uh, for Erling. And he's taught him a lot of important stuff. And Erling has also said that he wouldn't be where he is today if it wasn't for Solskjaer. So definitely they have a very close and good relationship, um, which could be an advantage uh, in United's sort of uh, search for uh, for Erling and wanting to have him to, to United. I mean, I, I hope so. And there, there, there's already reports at the moment that uh, Solskjaer has been sending out his, uh, his main scout to go and take a closer look at Haaland. And I have seen some reports coming out of Norway to suggest that is the case. It, from what you know, it's, are United really interested in Haaland? Is there anything other than what we already know from the stories in the press? Mm, I think that, you know, obviously the way that Erling plays now, he would be on every major club radar. Um, nothing else would be quite surprising. <laughs> Uh, including uh, Manchester United, uh, as Oli knows him from Molde and he knows what he's going to get. So um, definitely, I think there's a real interest there from Manchester United in bringing him to Old Trafford. Um, and as you said, Oli has sent his sort of personal scout to watch him. But at the same time, Oli knows him so well from Molde already. It's not like he's going to need a scout to tell him his his qualities and how he is as a player. This Oli already knows from Molde. He knows what he can get from Erling and uh, the potential he's got to develop even more. Um, so I think that sort of it could be an advantage for for Man United in in the sort of hunt for Erling, uh, the relationship he's got with Oli. But in the end. This is always going to be a, a decision that's going to come down to Erling himself. He knows that if you're going to go to Man United, it's going to be a, a safe sort of choice. He knows Oli very well. He knows what he's going to get. It's a really big club. Uh, but there are also many other great managers out there in the Premier League, uh, for example. Uh, and in the end, it's going to come down to, I think, maybe Erling thinking, where can I sort of develop the best, where will I fit in in the team, Who, which, which manager can get the best potential out of me. It might very well be Oli because he knows him, but we can't deny that they're really, really good managers in the Premier League, uh, like Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola, Pochettino. I can imagine as a young boy, it must be also tempting to try and see what those kind of managers can can get from him because he's already been working with Oli. So it's sort of, it can be sort of both. Uh, it can be an advantage, but it can also be tempting to see what other managers and clubs can can get out of him in in his potential. I mean, United aren't going to be the only club interested in him. You're absolutely spot on there. And I suppose an interesting angle to think about this is Erling was born in Leeds. Yeah. His father, Alf Inger, played for Leeds, obviously... Roy Keane didn't really help his career. Do you do you feel that that might play? Because he's a young boy. He obviously his father's surely going to have an influence on where he moves next. Do you think that might affect United's chances, or is that the sort of 
Alfinger wouldn't really stand in the way of Erling if he did want to move to United for that reason. No, I think that um, Alfie has already said that sort of he uh, he has no problem in separating what he's done in his career with uh, the two clubs that well don't go hand in hand with Man United, <laughs> Leeds, and Manchester City. But that would never sort of stand in the way of what he he thinks is the right thing to do for his boy. Um, but the connection with England in general, because um, in Norway, playing in the Premier League is sort of the ultimate thing you can do. That is so big and it's always been it's bigger for us to play in the Premier League than in sort of Spain or Italy or, or Germany. It's always been sort of the special connection to, to England for any Norwegian um, players or kids growing up. There's something special about that. So... Um, that's a really good link, but as I said, I don't think that sort of Alfie or the the Leeds connection or the Manchester City thing is going to be sort of anything that can stop Erling from going to United if that's sort of what he wants. Now, obviously, the Premier League is one of the biggest leagues in the world, and do, he's had a fantastic season so far. But he is only nineteen; he's only had half a season in a European. Well, Austrian, no offence to the Austrian league, but it's, it's not a major league in comparison to Italy or, or Germany or Spain or England. Do you think that, that he'd be ready for a move to the Premier League already? I mean, he's certainly physically ready. He's, what, six foot four. He's, he's not a sort of diminutive striker. He's a powerful striker, but he's fast at the same time. Do you think he could adapt to the Premier League quite easily? Yeah, I think that he got definitely the potential and the tools needed to be a successful player in the uh, in the Premier League. Uh, and what's for sure now is that probably the, the Austrian League is it's too it's too small for him. He's too good for the Austrian League. So there's no doubt about that. He's probably gonna leave uh Austria in I wouldn't say that it's gonna last more than to the summer. Uh if it's gonna go already in January, we don't know, but for sure the Austrian League is Quite, it's starting to getting too good for that league now, and he probably wants to have uh, bigger challenges. But also, um, it's um, he is a, he's got a great potential, but he's not like it's not like he's going to walk into any Premier League team and like start ahead of Harry Kane, Aubameyang, Aguero, Firmino. That's not sort of he's not there yet, and it's not fair to sort of compare him with with those either because they've been at a very high level for such a long time but for sure yes he's got the potential to be I think a really good Premier League player but it's a sort of decision that he needs to think about do does he want to be in a club where he is now where he's sort of by there's no doubt he's number one he's gonna score a lot of goals because the opposition in Austria is is um yeah uh, not the uh, yeah. It's easier to score goals there probably if you were in the uh, in a in a Premier League team. Um, so that's sort of where he he needs to think about where he wants to be and what role he wants to play. Sort of. I mean, I, I think that was going to be my final question, which you sort of you've touched on there. But in your opinion, do you think Haaland should move in January if 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 the move came along, or do you think that staying at Salzburg? getting all the goals, being the number one man, rather than, I don't know, trying to get game time against Anthony Martial if he came to Manchester United or, I don't know, anybody else. Do you think that he'll want to stay at Salzburg in January? Or maybe could you see a sort of similar deal that Chelsea did uh, for Christian Pulisic when they signed him in January, but he stayed at Dortmund until the end of the season? Could United potentially do something like that with Haaland and let him stay at Salzburg but secure his signature in January? Yeah, that could definitely be uh, an option. And from the vibes that I'm getting from both Erling himself and his um, his father Alfie, he was his father Alfie was recently uh, at TV Two, our broadcasting channel, um, with the uh, when Norway played their sort of national um, matches recently, and it's pretty clear that they don't have any like rush. To, to sell him to any other clubs as it is now. I think he's quite 
happy to be at, at Salzburg uh, and he's very committed in giving his best there. Uh, and as you know, he's just 19 years old. He's got very many good years ahead of himself. And I think that what Erling and Alfie has done really good so far is that they are very, they are very sort of aware of where is the best place for him to be at a particular time in terms of um, his development. They sh- they don't want to rush things. They want to keep it like natural. Uh, but now they have sort of escalated a bit more than they think it would. Uh, so obviously they are going to be big club to want his signature, but they are really good in sort of um, looking at it like where is where's, where's the best club for him and where's the right place to be for him. I'm not sure 100% that he's like definitely going to go to uh, one of the big top clubs. Maybe he wants to even have a smaller step uh, of sort of medium club before he takes the final leap. Um, and But as I said, in the end, it's going to be up to him and what he feels is best for his potential. Um, but there's no doubt that he's going to be uh, a great player. And I can definitely see him fit quite good into United if that's sort of where he uh, ends up. Who knows? I mean, I think every United fan could see him fitting in. He, he looks like a a sort of generational talent. And he's got red tinted, as you said, red tinting glasses already that he wears at bed. He loves the Champions League anthem. Maybe that's going to be a problem at United, seeing as we're playing in the Europa League at the moment. But hopefully things will improve at United and a play like Haaland scoring the goals that he can. Maybe he can make the sort of difference that United need in January. But, but thank you very much for joining me today, Ingrid, and thank you for the insight. You know, it's really great to know that he drives around Salzburg with his windows down blaring out the Champions League anthem. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's just one of his great attributes. You know, he, he got everything that it t- it's going to take to be a great player. He's uh, he's so he's so physically strong, he's quick, he's good with his both feet, he's so good in sort of his movements inside the box, um, where he should go, like reading the game really well, which gives him, he would be sort of a very different player from uh, Martial and uh, Rashford in United. Um, he doesn't have to have the ball um, to be like comfortable, like maybe Rashford and Martial likes to have it. He's he's more of getting the ball and then really good finishes. So definitely, he could be a great player in Man United. Who knows? But um, an exciting player. We're so delighted to have him, of course, uh, and watch him. Uh, all of the um, all of the people in Norway just love this. <laughs> and thanks for having me. Maybe that we will see. Him. We, uh, no, thank you very much for coming on. Hopefully we can have you on again in the future, talking a little bit more about Haaland and maybe we can talk about Solskjaer further down the line as well. <laughs> thanks. It's been a pleasure.